Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech. This series of videos is based on the advanced information released by the exam boards ready for the 2022 GCSE exam papers. This advanced information gives detailed information about what will be appearing on each of the three papers and will help you focus your revision on the topics that will definitely be coming up. It requires a bit of interpretation and knowledge of the syllabus. So in these videos, I'll be summarising this information for you, telling you exactly what topics you need to be revising for each paper. I'll also be drawing on my experience of previous papers to give you my best guess for the type of questions you might expect. I think it'll be well worth your time watching it all the way through. If you're not yet subscribed, why not do that now and hit the bell so you'll be notified when these and other resources are uploaded. Now, if you find this video helpful, please do give it a like. This really helps me out. Also, why not share the video with your teacher and your friends, as I'm sure they will also find it useful. Let's get into it. Welcome along to my second instalment of the advanced information from AQA. Today I'm going to be looking at the information for the paper two, higher tier paper. Just a reminder of how to use this video. Watch the video through first. I'm going to go run through every topic that's going to come up on the paper. Once I've done that, below the video, you'll find a whole bunch of links to example questions matching up with those topics. So these are my best guess of the type of question that, that is going to come up. Very worthwhile going through each of those. Finally, I've included quite a big playlist of topics that I've identified with lots of extra questions. At least to give you a bit more extra practice of those topics. So if you're struggling on a particular one, then definitely worth going jumping through that and reviewing that material. Okay, so let's get let's get cracking on this then. So the advanced information is broken down into the six mathematical strands. Number, ratio, algebra, geometry, probability, and statistics. And I'm going to go through each one and identify the topics and talk a little bit about them. First up, it's number. And the first topic is prime number. So uh, I recommend that you know all your prime numbers up to 100. So you can spot one in a list. Also, product of prime factor decomposition. So taking a number, breaking it down to products of prime factors. Although you can do that on your calculator for paper two. Then we've got cube number. So knowing your cubes, I recommend memorizing the first 10 cubes. That's again, very helpful to spot them in lists and things like that. Uh, reciprocals. Reciprocal of number is if you write as a fraction, you flip the fraction over, don't you? So the numerator becomes a denominator and vice versa. Uh, so the reciprocal of three is one third. Now look at this, I have, I have found an example of a reciprocal question in the previous paper, but most likely this is gonna be part of another question. You know, if you have a look at the number of topics on these lists, there's far more than there are going to be questions on the paper. So some of these topics are going to be not the main event of a question, but maybe a skill required to answer it. So I have included a reciprocal question, but this could well be part of another question. For instance, finding the, you know, the gradient of a perpendicular line or something like that. OK, so just bear that in mind. Decimal places. So again, this might appear as part of another problem or, you know, just knowing how to deal with decimal places, uh, place value um, and your operations with uh, with decimals. Bounds. Now, this topic is sometimes goes by the name error intervals or limits of accuracy. It's where you've got a, you've been given a number rounded to a certain degree of accuracy, like one decimal place. And you then need to kind of consider the range of possible values it could take and possibly use those in subsequent calculations. OK, fractions, products. Now, I don't think this refers to just multiplying fractions. We've already had fractions arithmetic in the previous paper. I'm guessing, again, this is like a sub sub skill of another thing that you need to do. So, again, it could be part of a finding the equation of a uh, perpendicular line for instance where you have to you know uh, multiply different fractions together in order to 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 find your your new gradient i'm not sure it's going to be a product you know a question by itself although i have found a a, a fraction multiplication question for you to look at just to practice the skill so negative indices, knowing what those mean, being able to take a expression with a negative index and flipping it over, finding the reciprocal and using one over the positive version of that index. Okay, the next strand is ratio. 
sharing into a ratio so taking an amount and dividing up between two or three or more people using a ratio fairly typical question that one ratio on the line a similar thing taking a, a kind of a line segment and dividing that up so a bit like finding the midpoint of a line you know where you'd find it halfway along the the length of the line and that would be your midpoint but doing it in a ratio so like one quarter of the way along the line or one third of the way along the line something like that you know so the line is divided in a ratio of one to two so you would find one third of the way along the line and work out the coordinates of that uh, i have found an example question uh, attached it below fraction to percentages so being able to convert from a fraction to a percentage just you can just do that on your calculator can't you type it into the calculator times by 100 very simple uh, time conversion again there's a key on your calculator to convert between hours uh, and hours and minutes and seconds and things again I've attached a, an example question which shows you how to do that equation to percentages uh, this one is a bit tricky I couldn't actually find any example uh, previous questions where this happened rate of output I think it's probably like work rate uh, so you know if you've got if it takes five people 10 hours to build a wall how long would it take to yeah I've got an example question like that so have a look at that one pressure yeah there's a there's a formula for pressure they'll give you it so that you don't need to remember it it's just kind of a substitution skill really you might have to rearrange to find the thing that you want or substitute into it and then finally we've got percentage increase and also percentage decrease so again they might be part of another question I can't imagine that there'll be two separate questions on this you might have part A part B where you're doing a percentage increase and a percentage decrease or these skills might become part of another question next up algebra and the first topic on the list is equation of a circle so knowing that x squared plus y squared equals r squared where r is the radius of your circle centered on the origin there can be some questions around that like um, finding the perpendicular to the radius and, and those sort of things that might link up with some of the other skills uh, that are on on this list or it might just be a quick easy identify what the radius is from the diagram or, or you know or from the equation uh, something like that not quite sure it could link up with some of the other skills in this in this uh, section linear equations so that's generally solving them so if you've got a linear equation can you with an unknown on one or both sides can you solve it can you rearrange and solve x quadratic equations again can you factorize them or use the formula to solve them number line inequality so taking an inequality they solve exactly the same way as equations actually so just reduce it down so you've got x is less than or equal to or greater than uh, and then draw that on the number line factorization of quadratic so taking a quadratic equation and factorizing it into two brackets or a repeated bracket if it's a perfect square uh, don't forget about the difference of two squares as well sometimes that crops up multiplying out so if you've got uh, two brackets can you multiply them out remove the brackets and and rewrite it as a sum of terms completing the square so rewriting a quadratic into the form x plus a or squared plus b and then using that to work out the turning point of your uh, your quadratic coordinate problem no idea what this is maybe find a, a coordinate on a graph using the properties of the shape or something i don't i don't really know what that is but you know reading a coordinate off the graph that's not that's not a big deal is it perpendicular lines so if you're given an equation of a straight line can you find the equation of the perpendicular line so just use the gradient of the perpendicular line is minus one over the gradient of the line you've been given turning point this is probably going to be linked with the completing the square question above so after you complete the square can you take can you read out of that what the turning point is of the of the quadratic if you can you're golden on that one inverse functions so take a function and find the inverse function so how can you get your input back if you know the output finally triangular numbers so the number sequence 1 3 6 10 15 21 and so on so it's all the numbers you can make a triangle out of okay right next up geometry so area volume compound shape cone hemisphere so you're going to have like a something a bit like an ice cream cone with a dollop of ice cream on the top perhaps uh, so a cone with a hemisphere on the top 
perhaps you need to find the combined volume of the of the two things. Yep, you'll be given the formula for both those things. So it's not something you need to remember. Uh, you just need to know how to substitute into it and work it out. Volume scale factor. This is like the volumes of similar shapes. So, you know, if you've got a, a smaller version of a cone and a larger version of the cone, uh, how, how do those volumes relate to each other? So if the, the lengths or the heights are in ratio of one to n, then that any area that you measure on those shapes is gonna be in the ratio of one to n squared, and any volumes is gonna be in the ratio of one to n cubed. Plan, I assume this is short for plans and elevations. So taking a 3D shape and drawing a two dimensional view of it, either an elevation, a side view, or a plan, which is a top view, or you know, you know, um, the footprint of it. Pythagoras. Now this is appearing on both papers, so I, I don't think it's going to be massively complicated. I think it should be a fairly straightforward Pythagoras question, finding the uh, the length given the other two lengths. Probably nothing nothing too difficult, I don't think. Time, yeah, it could be any any problem involving time. Again, we've also already mentioned the fact that you need to convert between different time units, so that those two things might be related. You might have one question. Uh, that deals with both of those things. Geometric proof. So proving that an angle is equal to something or proving that two shapes are congruent, um, something like that. Can be quite tricky, these ones. Just need to make sure that you, you write every step down clearly, you know, in, an, in a logical way. You can't just kind of write the answer down. You have to kind of write it down step by step. So knowing how to refer to lengths of sides and angles using that that notation, you know, ACB is the angle at C going off to A and A and B, you know, that sort of language and be able to write it down neatly uh, and kind of in a logical way uh, to get all the marks. Next up, we have probability and the first topic listed is relative frequency. Uh, so relative frequency is just the kind of practical version of probability, isn't it, where you where you run a number of trials and you count the number of successes and you divide it by the number of trials and that gives you a kind of a an experimental version of probability. And then the second part, expected value. So I, I guess that these two are going to be in one question probably. You're going to have a relative frequency question and uh, as part of it and part of it will be um, working out the expected value. So if you've worked out the relative frequency of something being a quarter, for instance, how many times would you expect to be successful in 200 trials? So you just multiply your relative frequency by your number of trials and it will give you your expected number of successes. The last thing on there is notation. So presumably this means like proper probability notation, recognizing it. So perhaps they're going to give you a question with little or no context. So it doesn't really describe the problem, but it just gives you the probabilities in terms of the notation. And then you'll need to be able to recognize what they are and use them. I've, got, I've given a bit of an example in the in the list below. So you'll, you'll get to understand what I mean. OK, now the final strand is statistics. Estimation from a sample. OK, so samples are where you've taken like a subgroup from a larger group and you're using that to estimate properties of the larger group. OK, uh, I have got an example below, not quite a rare question type, so couldn't find many examples of this on previous papers, but I have found one for you to look at. Pie charts. Now, again, this is very rare to find pie charts on the uh, higher tier paper. It's normally a foundation topic. It's a crossover question, so it's on both papers. But where it, when it when it has appeared on the higher tier paper in the past, it hasn't been like a drawing a pie chart question. It hasn't been like that. It's more of an interpreting, maybe one with algebra or or ratios thrown in as well. I found an example question. So you'll see it isn't drawing a pie chart. It's it's working things out algebraically using in, using ratios and things like that. Uh, I think that's probably more likely the the type of question you're going to get. I, as I say, I don't think I've ever seen a draw a pie chart question on a higher tier paper. However, you know, I expect you should know how to do that anyway. So finally, mean. OK, now it tends to be estimated means on higher tier papers when they do appear. So that's where you've got a group frequency table. So you have to take the mid value of each group, don't you? And use that as an estimate of the value in each group. Multiply that by the frequency, add them all up, divide by how many you've got. Um, example below.
Okay, and that's it. So a quick quick zip through all the different topics. Uh, don't forget to go through the questions below. That's a really important bit. Me yabbering on is one thing, but you actually see in an example of the, th of the type of question I think is going to come up. Um, you know, that's going to be the valuable thing. If you discover a, a topic that you do need extra help on, don't forget to look through the playlist of topics that are coming up on this paper. So I've made a playlist for each paper. So if you're preparing for paper two, go through the paper two playlist. It's got all the topics on there that uh, I think are going to come up. Just pick out the ones that you that you feel like you need to do extra practice on. OK, good luck in your preparations, guys. I'll see you on paper three um, within a few days. All right. Catch you later. Don't forget that the best revision for these exams is to go through all the past papers from previous years. The advanced information really doesn't change that. Here's a link to all the past paper walkthroughs I've done. Uh, there, there's a link below each video where you can download the paper. If you work through all of those before your final exams, there will be really few surprises for you on the day. Good luck and see you on the next video.